Hi, thanks for joining me today on Susan's Cozy Kitchen. Have I got a Halloween treat for you. If you went to elementary school with me, you'll remember my mother making cookies for basically every holiday party that we had. And my mom always made these cookies and she would cut them out with cookie cutters and then decorate them according to whatever the theme was. So today I'm going to show you how she made her jack-o'-lantern cookies. I forgot to tell you, they're called Southern Tea Cakes and they're very basic, they're very simple, but yet they're light and delicate and wonderful and they are so easy to make, so easy to decorate and you will be the hit of the party if you serve these. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is to cream together our butter and sugar and egg. So this is a half cup butter. You can use margarine, a cup of sugar, but I've got the butter and the sugar in here. I'm going to turn it on. And to cream it means to just let them blend together until they have a creamy consistency. Okay. I'm just going to pull it up and show it to you. This is the consistency that it is. It looks nice and creamy. So next, I'm going to get this going again. And I'm just going to put my egg in there and let the egg mix in. To that, I'm going to add an eighth of a cup of milk, two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Time to add in the flour. We all know what a messy person I am. Let's go ahead and put this on to add the flour in, a little at a time. And this is two and a half cups self-rising flour. Okay, and that is all mixed in. So let's turn it off. I should tell you I have my oven preheating at 350 and today I will be using my conventional oven instead of the air fryer. To make it easier to roll out and cut out the cookies, I put the dough in the refrigerator. Now you want to flour your surface. You don't want a lot, but you do want some flour out. Then I'm just going to put it out. I'm not going to just dump all of the dough out at once. I like to do it a little bit at a time so I can work with a smaller amount. My trusty rolling pin, get a little flour on it. And I'm going to roll this to about a quarter of an inch. All right. I have a round cookie cutter straight down and then gently lift it up and then onto the cookie sheet, onto the parchment paper. And I'll just keep rolling and cutting until I have my cookie sheet full and then I'll pop it into my preheated oven for about 10 to 12 minutes, I just want the dough to be a nice light golden brown when I take the cookies out. The dough's already warming up and they're slightly misshapen when I'm lifting them, but you know what, that's okay. It just makes them a little more interesting. No two pumpkins are the same, so why should any two cookies be the same, right? Nice little life lesson there. I can remember when I was a little girl helping my mom make the cookies for, for our parties and I would get so upset if, you know, they weren't all just perfectly round and I remember my mom saying, well, does everybody in your class look alike? Don't they all look different? I'd say, yeah. She'd say, well, then shouldn't all the cookies be different too? A little deeper, but you know, she was right and it kind of stuck with me. So now 
when things aren't exactly just perfect, it's okay because my mama said so. So if your cookies don't turn out just right or your rolls or whatever, it's okay. They don't all have to be just the same. They can be special and different. And these go. I'll put these in for about 10, maybe 12 minutes while I'm waiting for them to cook. I'll go ahead and get the next sheet ready. And they're just lightly brown around the edges. You can see that one in particular, this one. This one's nice and brown around the edge. Okay, they look wonderful. They smell even better than they look. And I'm just going to slide them very gently over to oops, the rack and let them cool. And I'm going to lift this and put it on here. And I'll put these in the oven now for 12 minutes. A quarter cup of butter. I'm going to put that in here. To that, I'm going to add two cups of powdered sugar. Turn on the blender. Now I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of half and half. You could use milk, you could use whipping cream, whatever you'd like to use. I have half and half, so that's what I'm using. To that, put about a teaspoon vanilla extract. Whenever I make something really sweet like this, I always add a little bit of salt, so I'm just going to sprinkle a little salt in. I'm going to follow the directions on the back of my food coloring. And it says for orange to do one drop of red and four drops of yellow. So let's start there and then adjust as necessary. Ideally, I'd like it to be about this color of orange. It is not. And I'm just going to keep adding food coloring until I get the color that I want, or at least as close as I can get. I think that's going to be as orange as I'm going to be able to get this. I have added so much food coloring and the color is just basically staying the same. It's not getting any deeper, any richer. So um, this is where I am <laughs> with my food coloring and it'll still be cute. It just won't be quite as orangey as I wanted. So let's get started with the first one here. Just going to spread frosting on it all the way around. Remember what I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. I have raisins in here. Raisins were what we always used to decorate the cookies and that always got to be the thing that I did. So I'm going to decorate like I used to do. Here are the eyes. And I always liked to stand the nose up so that it was sticking out for my jack-o'-lantern. And then the teeth, or the jack-o'-lantern mouth. And I liked to give him a crooked little smile. There we are. And there's our first jack-o'-lantern. Now normally my mom would do them all with raisins, but one of my sons is not a fan of raisins, so I told him I would do some with chocolate chips for him, so nice mom that I am, I'm going to do a chocolate chip one here, maybe two or ten. Chocolate chip time, so here's a bunch of chocolate chips, and I'm going to do Okay, there's three there for that eye, and three for that eye. Hmm. Maybe just one for the nose. Slightly off center. 
and then chocolate chips make everyone happy. So this will be a smiling one. I'll leave a couple of spaces in there because he's a little jack o lantern but he's missing a tooth or two. There. Alright. And now we have a happy face jack o lantern And let me just keep decorating. I have some red hots. This will give it a cinnamon flavor. Won't that be fun? I kind of like this one. I'm not sure how it'll taste, but look how cute. And now for the final one. Um, icing with some sprinkles. You're only limited by your imagination and what you have in your pantry. I hope you enjoyed today's video as I took a walk down memory lane and made some cookies that my mom used to make for me when I was a little girl. These are great, just plain, with icing, any flavor, any type decoration, and you can cut them into any shape you want, or you can double the milk and make them drop cookies. As always, the full recipe for the cookies and the icing will be in the description box below the video. While you're down there checking out the recipe, please be sure and give it a thumbs up. While you're there, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you find out every time I upload a video to YouTube. Thanks for joining me today. God bless.